Wilson! 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 Where are you, Wilson? Wilson! 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 Oh, oh, Wilson! Are you alright? Are you alright? Oh, I thought I'd lost you forever! G'day, Rich Hungerford here from Bushlaw Australia Survival and Tracking School. Look, a lot of us have heard about or watched Cast Away the movie, which was portrayed uh, very, very well by Tom Hanks, the actor, in terms of what actually happened, and particularly the relationship with Wilson, his imaginary friend, the basketball that he found floating on the beach or something like that. This little video, I wanted to talk to you about some of the actual relevance of what's going on in your head if you are in a survival situation for real and you're doing it solo. All right? I speak from experience here because I spent a lot of time doing long solo bush ex expeditions off my own back. Okay? I was going through some hard times in my life quite some few years ago and I found the best therapy for me was to throw some gear or sometimes not a lot of gear at all and just disappear. I wasn't good company for anyone so I went out and found my own company. A lot of things happened out there that will probably stay between me and the rest of the ether. However, there's a lot of stuff that was transferable. One of those things led me to understand very intimately what goes on with our psychology and our need to communicate to others when we are deprived of other human company. So let's talk about that for a second. What is the benefit and why do we need other people in a survival situation? First off, I think it relates to our primal anthropological roots of subsisting in small extended family groups. Nomadic, often, but even when we're sedentary, we're in a familiar group of people. That lent a lot of strength and a lot of resilience to us as a community. Okay? When we're deprived of that, we feel it quite poignantly. And that's one of the key things you'll notice if you do a lot of solo walking, solo hiking, camping, or survival stuff, if you're a nutcase like me, then you'll end up getting into that situation where you are facing yourself. Now one of the th things I teach here at the school that is so, I guess, particular about the way I teach survival at this school is it's all based on my experiences, both with groups and without groups. And what I've found is when you're without other people, you think aloud all the time. You walk around talking aloud. Your thoughts that would normally be kept inside your head are expressed. There's no need to do that. It's just the sound of another human voice. That's one aspect of it. So we are clearly a social, gregarious species. We like the company of our own kind. Most of the time. All right. So there's that aspect, definitely. But that's not probably the driver that turns our imagination into a Wilson creating beast. A lot of the practicality of group support in a survival situation is the more driving and pressing factor about the whole event. If, for example, I am by myself doing a survival stint and I become injured, I'm now challenged significantly with dealing with finding my own basic life support requirements. Shelter, water, fire, food. Without help and without being able-bodied and of sound mind, I might find that challenging and that would therefore lead to my potential demise or certainly a very, very unpleasant experience. Right? So one of the things we get from a group is support in times of illness or injury. The other thing we get from a group is a collective, a collective of knowledge and wisdom and life experience. Different sets of eyes look at the same problem in a different way. And as a consequence, they come up with different solutions. That may offer a better way of doing something, achieving some basic requirement we have in that survival situation in a more efficient, effective way. So the group working together that way supports each other from a very physiological point of view, 
but also with problem solving. So that's one of the key reasons why group survival is, is a prominent factor of the success of the human species. Cooperation is our big strength. We all have supercomputers up here, and individually, those keep us alive if, we, if we're caught out by ourselves. But for the longer term, we need the collective. We need the cooperation of other humans. So that's an interesting sort of take on history. If you look back at most traditional cultures the world over, Western society is the only one that really incarcerates criminals. Everyone else boots them out. They get banished. If they don't follow the cooperation ethos of the group, they're removed. So what? This guy is probably a, a primal human. He can fend for himself, he can protect himself from lions and tigers and everything else and great predators, he can find all of his basic needs. But at some point, if that individual becomes injured or ill, he's done. And that is the, the, the key factor, I think, that makes the group collective so powerful in a human society or human group or human extended family organisation. It's really about having people around you to support you. And then we have the cultural and social aspects of that cohesive grouping. But they are not as important to our day-to-day -day survival, especially at the early stages of the onset of survival situations and events, as the basic factors of them having someone else be able to look after us if we become injured or ill, and vice versa. Okay, that's the way it works. So, the next time you see that movie, have a think about that. Think about what's going on there, what's being portrayed. And think of how you would feel, feel in that situation. How would you cope? It's really easy to think it's going to be easy when you're sitting at your, at your computer terminal or watching on TV some kind of reality show. It's really easy. When you spend a lot of time alone in remote wilderness, you'd be amazed what your head comes up with and how loud it is. And you have to spend a lot of focused effort on shutting it down and shutting it up. Because if you don't, the noises become overwhelming and you start to react to them. You start to actually become an embodiment of what's going on in your head. And that, dear friends, is the secret of survival. It is about controlling you. Not me controlling you or anyone else controlling you. The beauty of survival and why I love to teach you so much is because it teaches you to control you.